9 First News. Terrifying moments for students and staff as UMKC issues an active shooter alert. Now police are saying there was never a threat to the public. The discovery officers made, though, close to campus. Mothers across the country are looking to us for help. There's a new push by lawmakers to get more baby formula from suppliers to the shelves. One involves executive action from President Biden. The order going into effect immediately to lessen the strain of the shortage. And right now, progress is underway for the KC Streetcar Expansion Project. Live pictures here downtown where crews are pulling hundreds of feet of rail to the construction zone. We'll let you know where you need to watch out for the work if you have an early commute. I love this. I don't have to do the work, so I love it. It's just a very interesting process that uh, we're going to show you live. Thank you for being with us this morning. I'm Donna Pittman and I'm Jamie Weiss in for Cody Holyoke. There's a lot to get to today, but we got to start with the forecast because it's a little hazy outside. I saw a little bit of fog in my commute in this morning, Nick. Yeah, I might see just a little bit of that, Jamie. It's not going to have any impact that that humidity certainly will have an impact on your day. It'll make it feel a lot like summer and look, we call this a, a mesoscale convective vortex. It's a little area of low pressure that's driving thunderstorms in the north East Oklahoma and southeastern Kansas. That line of storms is making a beeline for the Lake of the Ozarks region and we'll make it there in the next couple of hours. We see first alert future scan the greens, which would be the rain showers, maybe some embedded lightning by eight to nine o'clock. Butler, Clinton, uh, Warsaw, Truman Lake. Additional thunderstorms are possible here south of 50 highway into central Missouri this afternoon. So that would be just southeast of Kansas City. So rain chances today for the metro, you know, very low tomorrow. A slight chance of a shower thunderstorm morning and afternoon. The rainy impacts are on the way throughout the day on Saturday, and there could even be some thunderstorms in there as well. A red sky this morning. It's 63 degrees and you're going to feel that humidity that Jamie was talking about this afternoon as we climb to 88 degrees and remaining breezy and warm for graduation ceremonies this evening at 79. Jamie. Well, Nick, we do want to check in on the morning drive. This is a live look at I-70 near 3rd Street. We're getting reports from Scout that I-70 eastbound is closed just past James Street. They're encouraging folks to use an alternate route. Of course, we're going to check in with News Chopper 9's Johnny Rollins in just a few minutes to see how things are looking elsewhere in the metro. Well, this morning, Kansas City, Missouri police are investigating a double shooting that happened by the UMKC campus. This was near 51st and Oak. Now, the school actually sent out an alert about an active shooter around 6 o'clock last night, but Kansas City, Missouri police say there never was an active shooter, and they don't think this had anything to do with the school. Now, university police officers say they did find two people who'd been shot inside of a car in a parking lot near the Whole Foods Market. Still, the school says it was necessary. They felt to warn people about about the potential danger. Luckily, um, we're in a in between the uh, spring and uh, summer sessions right now, so very few people on campus, especially after five. Dorms are mostly empty, so um, we did that out of an abundance of caution. Just, just always better to be safe than sorry. Police say the shooting was likely between people who knew each other. And both people who were shot are expected to be okay. No word on any suspects. Before that double shooting, police were on the scene of a homicide hours earlier. This was near 49th and Agnes. A man was found shot to death in a car near an apartment complex. Police haven't made any arrests yet. If you know something that could help solve this case, you're asked to call the tips hotline at 816-474-TIPS. You could be eligible for a cash reward. Well, advocates with a domestic violence shelter have a reminder after the murder of a former KU soccer player. Now they are begging people who are in dangerous situations to reach out if you need help. 25 year old Reagan Gibbs was found dead in her apartment on Monday. Her husband, Chad Merrick, is charged with first degree murder. Well, the Willow Domestic Violence Center in Lawrence says that they have a 24 seven hotline that you can call even if you just have a question about your situation. I think people are often afraid to call a hotline. They think they have to be in the middle of a crisis or a violent event. But the best time to call is when you have a question or a concern about yourself or a friend or a loved one. If you or someone you know is dealing with domestic violence, you can call the Willows 24 hour hotline or the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Six teens are facing criminal charges in a deadly weekend shooting in Olathe. The Johnson County, Kansas DA says they were involved in the death of a 19 year old over a bag of marijuana. This was in Black Bob Park on Saturday. 
Two of those teens are 13, while the other four are 14. Prosecutors will try to charge the 14 year olds as adults. A judge will have the final say. Data shows violent criminal violent crime increases in the summer when teens are out of school. So Kansas City, Kansas police are offering several programs to try to help keep students safe over the break. There's a tackling conflict together football camp. This is for kids ages 8 to 18. This teaches football basics and anger management. There's also a soccer camp. Officers will host three youth academies to help teens understand law enforcement better. The department will also plan to hire some of them as cadets. Because so many of our young people, some of their first encounters with the police is in negative situations. So we're trying to change that all around. KCKPD is hosting an open house on June 1st. For more information on these programs and how to sign up, you can just head to KCK's Police Department Facebook and Twitter pages. The KCK Police Department is not the only one working to reach out to young people over the summer months. Olathe Police are planning kicking it with the cops events for June and July. Now those will include things like fishing, kickball, glow golf. That sounds fun. All of it does. And bowling. Kansas City, Missouri Police are also hosting a youth academy. That's in July. Enrollment for that is open right now. And right now, the next step in expanding Kansas City streetcar line is underway. It's very exciting. KBC Diets Martin Augustine is live this morning near 27th and Grand, where where rails for the new line are going to be put into place. Good morning, Martin. Yeah, they're already finished up. This was a really quick process. If you take a look back here, you can see the two rails that have been pulled into place. It'll be part of the extan uh, expansion project uh, for the street. The can you guys hear me? Okay, am I on right now? <laughs> you are on, Martin. I'm hearing people <laughs> talking in my that. ear. So. You, you, you are okay, on, Martin. Thank you We've got much. your live pictures. All right. Okay, let me uh, start that again. So you see the two rails back there. They've been dragged into place. 800 feet worth of rail be the first steps in this uh, in, in getting the rail put into place to expand the uh, uh, expand the streetcar line. Let's show you how far it's going to expand. Three and a half miles to the south, right down to 51st and Brookside Boulevard at UMKC. Eight new stops will be all a part of this. We come back out here live again. There's that rail dragged into place, and part of the issue here was to uh, make sure that this was done before the morning rush hour. Sure enough, they got that done in no time at all. Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Well, you can count on KBC 9 for updates as the KC streetcar heads to UMKC. We're going to bring you construction updates and traffic alerts when the project impacts your commute. You can look for that on air and online as well as on our free KBC 9 News app. All right, well, a Kansas public school executive got to test a school storm shelter the hard way when a massive EF3 tornado ripped through Andover. You'll remember that last month. David Jackson, he actually lives near Prairie Creek Elementary. He drove there to take shelter when he realized that the storm was no joke. The school has a shelter equipped to stand an EF5 tornado. Jackson says he could actually hear crashing noises and the roof being torn off, but thankfully that shelter, it held together. The structure did just exactly what it was supposed to do, but doesn't mean it wasn't scary being inside it. And that's just an EF3. Imagine a four or five. Now, because Kansas is in Tornado Alley, all Andover public school buildings and you know, schools, all the buildings within the district, they had these designated storm shelters. The National Weather Service says a number of weak tornadoes formed in northwestern Kansas Tuesday afternoon. Some also formed in southwestern Nebraska near the state line. All the storms were in rural areas and there's no reports of any injuries or serious damage. We know that only a few trees got knocked down and fortunately we didn't see any of that severe weather here at home. Yeah. No, uh, this is the season though for it and these it things is. are reminders that we all need to be prepared uh, for, for something we hope never happens, right? That's right. The, the severe risk today is highest across Iowa and uh, Minnesota. You know, there's a risk of significant severe weather there. Today is going to be a hot and humid day, a July like day here in Kansas City. We may get a few thunderstorms south of 50 highway into central Missouri late this morning into this afternoon. A slight chance of a shower or storm popping up anywhere tomorrow morning into the afternoon. Not a washout day. Still think our plans are OK, but Friday night through all of Saturday, Saturday morning and afternoon, 
Areas of rain and thunderstorms are likely to impact any of your plans. So if they're flexible and you can move them, Sunday would be the day that I'd move them to 66 degrees. It's scattered clouds and sunshine. So a chilly weekend 57 for a high on Saturday. Next week we're leading off with rain and thunderstorm chances on Monday and Tuesday. That'll keep our highs below normal in the upper 60s. We do warm back into the 70s, low 80s for next Thursday and Friday. And we have like a red sky this morning with cirrus clouds blowing off of the thunder storms down in Oklahoma into Kansas as they're spreading into Kansas City right now. Johnny Rollins probably has a good view of that. I do uh, prophetic as you uh, spoke of that Nick as I uh, have a look at the uh, sunrise yeah on the eastern horizon everything looking good through there and there are the clouds Nick was talking about uh, that are uh, giving us that pretty sunrise this morning and a pretty good looking start to the rush hour northbound I-35 here past 75th Street on up to the Shiner Mission Parkway run 635 looking good no problems back upstream at the Oval Parkway here on I-35 and no major problems to report anywhere around town right now. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Okay, Johnny, thank you. Well, the federal government is taking new steps to boost the nation's supply of baby formula. KMBC 9's Aixa Diaz is in our Washington bureau to explain what the president and Congress are doing. Donna Jamie, President Biden is invoking the Defense Production Act to speed up domestic production of formula, while the House just passed two bills to address the shortage. President Biden addressing the nation's formula shortage as many families struggle to feed their infants. As a parent and as a grandparent, I know just how stressful that is. Under the Defense Production Act, suppliers of formula manufacturers must fill orders from those companies before other customers. The president has also directed the Departments of Agriculture and Health to work with the Pentagon to identify overseas formula that meets U.S. standards and fly those products back home. The bill is passed. On Capitol Hill, the House approved two bills. One allows people in the assistance program known as WIC to use vouchers to purchase formula from any producer instead of a specific brand. The second bill provides the FDA with $28 million in emergency funding. Mothers across the country are looking to us for help, and we will not force them to face this crisis on their own. But that emergency funding will likely not pass in the Senate. Over in the House, most Republicans voted against it, saying they don't want to give the FDA more money. In Washington, I exit as KNBC 9 News. COVID-19 cases across the country are reaching levels we haven't seen since the winter. Yeah, health experts are saying that right now we're unprepared to ward off a fall surge. Why they're calling on Congress to step up and save lives. Ukrainian officials say Russia is waging a new war that has nothing to do with fighting. The Russian operation Ukraine says could spell trouble for the whole world. Hot and humid today as we look ahead, there is a higher chance of rain impacting our weekend plans on Saturday. I'll show you future scan the timing of when that heavier rain arrives coming up. Johnny Rollins, your only eye in the sky with News Chopper 9, KMBC 9 First News, leading the way.
And welcome back. We are live at News Chopper 9 looking at a really good rush hour to start out this uh, Thursday morning as we are uh, seeing a lot of folks rolling out of bed. If you're getting up and around wondering if you need an early start, not at all. So we take a look at the Northland, southbound I-35-29, up to and across the Vaughn Bridge to the northeast corner of the loop. Doing very well, so to the heart of America. Uh, Buck O'Neill Bridge is looking good, too, from the Northland. Absolutely no issues for you so far. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. New COVID-19 cases are at their highest point since mid-February, and health experts are warning that more hospitalizations and deaths aren't far behind. In fact, hospitalizations are up by more than 60% in the last month. A new projection shows admissions could keep increasing in nearly every state over the next four weeks. In Washington, the White House is urging Congress to pass new COVID-19 funding, saying that without it, more Americans could be left vulnerable to the virus. We will not be able to buy enough vaccines for every American who wants one. We will find ourselves in the fall or winter uh, with people getting infected and no treatments available for them because we will have run out. Today, the CDC is expected to endorse Pfizer's booster shot for kids ages 5 to 11. This is after the FDA gave the green light earlier this week. This is the last hurdle that those shots have to clear before becoming available to the public. The CDC is investigating 180 cases of unexplained severe hepatitis in children from 36 states, including Missouri. Now, the CDC says that most of those kids are under 5. Nearly all have had to be hospitalized. About 15 have needed liver transplants. Five of the children have died. So this is serious. Experts still are not sure what's causing this, but they say that there may be a link to a separate virus that causes breathing and stomach issues. And happening today, the Missouri Department of Health and Human Services will announce a new plan to fight hepatitis C. It's called Show Me the Cure. The goal here is to improve access to testing and treatment. The department says millions of people have chronic hepatitis. and They don't even know it. This morning, Russia claims hundreds of Ukrainian troops have surrendered and are being held at a pretrial detention center. The Russian Foreign Ministry says more than 950 Ukrainian soldiers have laid down their arms just this week. This was at the steel plant in Mariupol. Ukraine hasn't given an update on the soldiers who've left the plant or its efforts to negotiate a prisoner exchange with Russia. Well, Ukraine is now accusing Russia of what authorities are calling food terrorism. Okay, so Russian forces, they are stealing huge amounts of grain from areas under UK, uh, Ukraine control under their control in Ukraine, I should say, excuse me. Now, before the war, most of the food produced by Ukraine was exported through ports like what you're seeing here. Now these docks, they've been blocked by Russia. New CNN video shows trucks from the Russian military transporting grain to Crimea. Ukraine's president says this could have serious consequences for the rest of the world. This is not just a strike at Ukraine. Without our agrarian export, dozens of countries in various regions of the world have found themselves on the brink of food deficit. The president of the European Council says that the EU and U.S. will try to find new ways to export grain from Ukraine. Some of it's already being shipped from ports in Romania, but that only accounts for a fraction of Ukraine's total production. Happening here at home, it's a week of graduations for the Kansas City Public School District and it wraps up tonight with ceremonies for Paseo Academy for Fine and Performing Arts and Northeast High School. Paseo students will graduate first. Both those ceremonies will be held at the UMKC Swinney Recreation Center. Over in Kansas, Bonner Springs seniors are graduating tonight. They're going to be getting their diplomas at Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City, Kansas. In the Shawnee Mission School District, Shawnee Mission Northwest and Horizons will have graduations today. Now both will be at the Shawnee Mission School District Stadium. Congratulations to all of you uh, graduates. Uh, we get to say congratulations to Sporting KC as well. Sporting KC moving on from its losses this season. They were finally able to snag a win at home last night. Shallowy running at Abubakar here. Trying to get through two defenders. Daniel Shallowy slots it home. So Sporting hosted the Colorado Rapids at Children's Mercy Park yesterday. Casey gets the first goal of the game, courtesy of Daniel Shallowy. He got another in the second half to break a tie. He did get a card near the end of the game after a skirmish. But Sporting goes on to win 2-1. to one. So I would just say that the team played very well. They, they fought for everything. They competed. They were organized, and they played to the game plan. Sporting heads to California next for a game against San Jose. That's going to be on Sunday. Kickoff is at 630 on Sunday night of the last three matches between the teams. Sporting has won one. The other two have been ties. Kansas City has won more games overall this season. 
Honestly, uh, probably really good weather for the game last night. I live in an apartment complex and everybody was outside of the pool yesterday. They officially opened up the pool for us at least. Got to get those pools open. You get close to Memorial Day, you see a lot of those pools open. We've had a lot of pool days in yes. spring. Yeah, well, it's been it's been so muggy. I bet it did you yeah, go swimming. It probably felt good. Yeah, I stayed in the now. AC yesterday. Yeah, it's uh <laughs> today today's going to be even hotter Just than yesterday. Out. It's almost 90 <laughs> degrees uh, for a high this afternoon. So, it's going to feel a lot like July. And then we're going to go back to I mean, maybe fall temperatures for the weekend. We've highs in the 50s. It's been all over the place uh, April and May. Let me take you down to Oklahoma and southeast Kansas. You see this little area of low pressure. We call this a mesoscale convective vortex. Uh, this is a big fancy word for a little area of low pressure that's driving thunderstorms uh, into southeast Oklahoma, southwestern Missouri. That line of storms is heading toward the Lake of the Ozarks. So if you have friends or family down there, give them a call. Let them know there's lightning on the way. Uh, Butler, Clinton, Warsaw, Truman Lake, Sedalia. We may have uh, some light showers, even a thunderstorm uh, in the next couple of hours, say eight, nine o'clock this morning. You can see the green showing up here. And then later this afternoon, we may have additional thunderstorms developing along and south of 50 highway into central Missouri. So there could be some stormy impacts here, but it's unlikely that we're going to see that rain here in Kansas City for today. A mild morning. You can feel the humidity. The dew point values are in the low 60s. When they're in the low 60s, you can feel the humidity. It's just, it feels humid. It's 63 degrees. When we look at our 12 hour forecast today in Kansas City. 81 degrees at noon and near 90 at 4 o'clock this afternoon. It'll be a mix of sun and clouds for today. At times we'll have more clouds. Other times we'll have more sunshine. And we're going to have a lot of cloud cover over the weekend. If your weekend plans are flexible, try and flex it to Sunday. Instead of Saturday, rainy impacts are likely along with some embedded thunder both morning and in the afternoon and chilly. 57 degrees. We'll have temperatures in the 60s on Sunday. That's your outside day. Okay, all right, noted, Nick, thank you. Well, it's an OSHA discovery that has everyone smiling, the expensive find heading back to its rightful owner, all thanks to an eagle-eyed snorkeler.
Good morning, 625. We have to show you this, the view from Johnny Rowland's office in the sky. I tell you what, the job he has getting to bring us these uh, images, the only one who can do it. Uh, maybe a little forecast, is, uh, prognosticating is what I think the, the word that Johnny used earlier as, as far as what the, the weather may be. But we're looking at a hot and humid day today. Thank you, Johnny, for that. All right, well, it's not exactly treasure, but a snorkeler did make an expensive discovery during a dive. Yeah, he found a set of $2,000 dentures. Just think about that for a second. Aaron <laughs> Welbird was wrapping up a dive in Gulf Shores, Alabama, when he saw the upper set of teeth just sitting on the ocean floor. Well, it turns out a visitor from Wisconsin had lost the teeth in the water days before. Well, now he's thrilled to be getting them back. That actually scared me. I was like, I was like, yeah, I said, where's the rest of this guy's teeth? Like, At first, I thought it was somebody playing a joke on me, you know, and I said, yeah, as I didn't know. And then, and she goes, my cousin found them. Well, the man says he's thrilled he won't have to spend thousands of dollars to replace his dentures. I bet. Okay, I need to know more about how they found him. Was his name on them? <laughs> That's great. All right, the Pride of Hearts has made its way to Mission Hills, Kansas, and you will find this beautiful entry at the corner of State Line Road and Tomahawk Road. Now, get this. The artist who is behind this actually has done many murals across town in black and white, but created this card in full color. It's even titled Kansas City in Color. He says his inspiration was to create positive vibes and bring out the child in everybody. KMBC 9 and KCWE 29 are proud to sponsor the Parade of Hearts, which runs through May. The hearts will then be auctioned off for charity next month. Finland and Sweden have officially applied to join NATO, but not everyone's on board. Yeah, a no vote from one country could derail the whole thing. The concerns Turkey's leaders say are preventing them from committing to a guess.
leading the way. You're watching KNBC 9 First News. A line of thunderstorms on First Alert Live Radar is moving northeastward towards central Missouri. I'll show you the timing of when those thunderstorms will arrive and when we're more likely to see more widespread impacts from rain and storms this weekend. After a long court battle, the Kansas Supreme Court has upheld a map drawing new political lines in Wyandotte County. We'll walk you through the split. The next step in expanding the streetcar line, you can see right down there in two rails dragged into place this morning. We'll show you what it's all about and how far along the expansion is for the streetcar. Well, good Thursday morning. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jamie Weiss in for Cody Holyoke. Yeah, and I'm Donna Pittman and uh, at the start of a summer like feeling day. Yeah, just another like. one where the weather's going all over the place <laughs> up, down, left, right. Uh, it's going to be a hot and humid day for many mm. of us, but there is a chance of a few showers and thunderstorms well, sneaking in the center. But Missouri. jackets maybe tomorrow morning, right? Yeah, it's going to start, especially <laughs> Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, yeah. you know, we're going to struggle to make it into the 60s. We'll have highs in the 50s for some of our communities on Saturday. There's that line of thunderstorms that will be moving into north portions of uh, say Kansas, northeastern portions of Oklahoma, southwestern Missouri in the next couple of hours. The cirrus clouds are blowing off of those thunderstorms and spreading over Kansas City. Right now it is a humid morning at 63 degrees and it's going to turn into a hot and humid afternoon here for Kansas City near 90 for graduation ceremonies this evening. A mainly clear sky and breezy south winds 10 to 15 miles an hour and 79 degrees. Dew point values are in the 60s this morning. That's why it feels humid and for after school activities at 3 o'clock this afternoon, 88 degrees. Thunderstorm chances they're, they're higher into central Missouri. Think Lake of the Ozarks areas, Clinton, uh, Sedalia, down to Truman Lake, and that would be this morning into this afternoon. Johnny, this weekend, we'll see not only uh, more numerous downpours and thunderstorms, but that'll include here in Kansas City as well. All right, well, nothing to spoil the game this afternoon at uh, the K. It is quiet there now. 110, first pitch for the Chicago White Sox in town. How about that? Right along I-70 here, the inbound looking good. We were actually on the way out to check out some activity. We reported I-70 near Little Blue Parkway. Looks like they have cleared whatever was going on there. So the I-70 run around the corner here past uh, Blue Ridge Cutoff and on into downtown all the way from Blue Springs. Looking good. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Johnny, thank you. We are learning more about a deadly double shooting that happened in Lawrence Tuesday night. Lawrence police say this was a road rage killing. 22-year-old Zachary Sutton and 53-year-old Monty Amick were killed. Sutton was a passenger in a truck while Amick was driving an SUV. Officers say it started around 23rd and Harper when Amick said the truck's pipes were too loud. The argument escalated to aggressive driving and then gunfire. This was outside of that high V. I think people just get in too much of a hurry. Uh, they get angry too fast. And, and the reality is if somebody makes a mistake driving, they probably didn't do it on purpose. That's why it's called a mistake. And so just remember, give people a little extra space. If, if somebody needs over, let them over um, and just avoid those kinds of things. The police chief is asking anyone who saw what happened along 23rd or the shooting itself to call Lawrence police. The Eudora community is coming together tonight to hold a candlelight vigil for little Brooklyn Brohard. Now the vigil starts at 730 tonight. It's at the Eudora Parks and Rec Department. Brooklyn was on a motorcycle riding with her grandpa down East 1900 Road when a van pulled out from a stop sign and crashed into them. Now her grandpa is still in the hospital and deputies, they're still looking for the driver responsible for the crash. I want to show you a picture of the van involved. Police actually did find that van earlier this week, but if you recognize it or know may, who may have been driving it or anything else that could possibly help investigators, call the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. The Raymore Police Department is getting ready to welcome in its next police chief. Captain Jim Wilson is going to be taking over the role for Chief Jan Zimmerman, who's retiring in August. Wilson has given almost 29 years of service to the department and currently serves as an operations division commander. We turn now to your commitment 2022 coverage in Kansas. The state Supreme Court is upholding a new congressional map. It splits the mostly Democratic Wyandotte County down I-70 into two different congressional districts. Now the new map will also move Lawrence into a district with western and central Kansas. A voter rights group in Wyandotte County had been working with lawmakers to draw out a new congressional map since last summer. They say that they're upset, but they're not surprised. The legislature just, uh, I guess, ignored us and did what it wanted to do to uh, gerrymander the maps uh, to favor 
it and its supermajority. The courts have confirmed what we suspected all along, which is these maps are constitutionally sufficient, they are legally fine, and that uh, all the rest of the criticism really fit into the political bucket, not into a genuine legal criticism. Governor Laura Kelly responded to the news, saying the Supreme Court's decision was disappointing, but that she respects the court's ruling. She went on to say this decision should not discourage Kansans from making their voices heard in the electoral process. Missouri Governor Parson has signed the state's new congressional map into law. It is expected to keep the current split of six Republican districts and two Democratic districts. Kansas and Missouri are some of the last states to finalize congressional maps. The primary elections are set for August 2nd. Right now, the next step in expanding Kansas City streetcar line is underway. KMEC 9's Martin Augustine is live this morning near 27th and Grand, where rails for the new line are being put into place. Martin, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Don. It was called a rail pull because literally uh, a couple of crews got into some heavy construction equipment and dragged, pulled those two rails you see down there, about four, or excuse me, 800 feet worth of rail that'll be part of the first steps of this expansion project. Take a look at that little trench, I guess not so little trench, uh, to the left there. That's where those rails will eventually go, and uh, that, 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 uh, that rail line for the streetcar will be built up around them. Now, let's show you what this expansion is, is going to look like. This is just the first step, but this is a three-and-a-half-mile expansion uh, that's going to go from uh, where the current streetcar ends at Union Station all the way south to UMKC, specifically 51st and Brookside Boulevard. There will be eight new stops along the way, and this is work that will uh, continue until about 2025. As for the work here today. Those rails are in place. Uh, the work around those rails will take about two weeks and then there's going to be another rail pull here and that's kind of the process that will happen uh, as the uh, the rails, uh, as the line starts to take shape here uh, just south of Union Station. Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Martin, this is really exciting. Thank you. Well, Ride KC is looking at ways to connect neighborhoods near the Truman Sports Complex all the way to the University of Kansas Health System and KCK. It's launched a new study that looks at the feasibility of a high capacity East West transit system. The study involves both the streetcar and bus services. You can take part by going online or through public meetings until the end of June. All right. Well, I am here in the Weather Center with Nick talking about the nine day forecast because obviously summer like temperatures today, but then it's really going to cool down in a couple days. It is, and there's a reason why it's going to cool down, Jamie. The big impact is going to come from rain. Rain, a few thunderstorms, not severe on Saturday, but we're going to go from you know, July like heat today, you know, like near 90 with a lot of humidity, and then we're going to drop into the 50s for highs on Saturday. It's pretty incredible the change. It's coming from a strong cold front. There is a chance of a shower or thunderstorm tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon, just about anywhere. Uh, but it's not a washout day that comes on Saturday. Those, those storms will begin Friday night and will likely last off and on throughout the day on Saturday. It'll be more rain than lightning on Saturday. Sunday, we get a break from the rain, 66 degrees with scattered clouds and sunshine. And then we go back into more of an unsettled period with rain and thunderstorm chances Monday and Tuesday. And that's going to keep our highs well below the normal of 76. We'll only reach into the upper 60s next Monday and Tuesday. The rest of next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that'd be day seven, eight, nine. We warm up into the 70s and low 80s. Let's go to News Shopper 9's Johnny Rollins. All right, thanks so much, Nick. Looking good on the highways right now with no big problems to report anywhere. Boy, we've been searching around, really not any stalled cars to talk about today, and typically we have at least that, but I'm not complaining as we take a look at the triangle from the upper right there. It's going to be northbound I-49 from the left. Upper left would be 470 westbound, headed into the triangle here. A lot of folks headed to westbound 435 and over to the Kansas side. Look at how wide open it is through here in all directions. All the ramps on and off ramps looking good, so a a nice and easy start here on the southeast side. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. All right, Johnny, thank you. Well, today President Biden will welcome the leaders of Sweden and Finland to the White House. Both countries applied for NATO memberships earlier this week, and it looks like all members are planning to vote yes, except for one, Turkey. Now, Turkey, concerned about sanctions imposed on its country by the two countries, and its support of groups opposed to Turkey's leadership. Now, the Biden administration still says it's confident that Turkey will ultimately vote yes. You've got a raucous collection of states that all have opinions, um, that all have perspectives, that all have interests. But they also know how to and when to pull together and how to settle any differences. And I expect these differences will be settled. All 30 countries have to be on board before Finland and Sweden can actually join NATO. 
The House is taking action to fight domestic terrorism after the deadly mass shooting in Buffalo, New York. The House has passed a domestic terrorism bill that will develop more federal resources to preventing it. The House passed a similar bill in 2020, but it stalled in the Senate. Well, more signs inflation is taking its toll on the economy. Yeah, Wall Street took a major hit this week, but economic experts say it's not all doom and gloom. The factors that might keep the U.S. out of a recession. It's the rival game everyone wants to see, and now you can start making your plans to get there. The special opportunity for Chiefs fans to get to Vegas for this winter showdown with the Raiders. Our first alert 12-hour day planner, so you can prepare for what's next. KNBC 9 First News, leading the way. Six forty three. This will be a summer like day with the heat and humidity with scattered clouds and sunshine near 90 degrees for tomorrow. You're going to start to notice a cooler feel 74 degrees with a low chance of a shower thunderstorm in the morning and the afternoon and look at Saturday's rain chance jumps up to 60%. So rainy and stormy impacts are likely Saturday morning through Saturday afternoon. So lower chances of rain today and tomorrow. Saturday, it is a high chance of rain impacting your plans. There won't be a whole lot of thunderstorms around on Saturday, Johnny, so we're not concerned about severe weather, and, and that's a plus. That's always good news. All right, thanks so much, Nick. Take a look at your first alert traffic. Still very quiet on the highways today, and we're really not seeing any problems anywhere. There's I-435. Traffic at the top of the screen there coming off I-35, the big interchange there, I-35, K-10, 435, past Quivira, and on around the corner. In fact, a nice long-distance look here as we're just out crossing over Metcalf, so there's the Evelyn Parkway. That eastbound traffic headed on over in this direction looking good. Westbound equally as good, and uh, just nothing to talk about as far as any problems, so we like it like that. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. Investors are seeing some truly ugly numbers right now. Yeah, Wednesday was just a brutal day. That's all you can say on Wall Street. It was one of the worst that we've seen in years. Yesterday, the Dow had its worst one day drop since 2020 and major retailers, they took big hits, the biggest actually. Walmart stocks slid 17%, Target 24%. Both companies say inflation is eating into their profits right now. And with costs still on the rise, experts are mixed on whether we're headed toward a recession.
On the one hand, we have a very strong jobs picture right now. There are more, far more job openings, a record number of job openings versus the number of unemployed. But inflation is deeply embedded in our economy right now. As for food prices, many suppliers still have not passed on the new expenses to us, the customers. For example, the wholesale price of eggs rose 200% last month compared to the same period last year. Well, businesses are blaming credit and debit cards for higher prices at some stores. Yeah, credit card giants, Visa and MasterCard, they raised their interchange rates, also called swipe fees, last month. Now, stores, they're responsible for paying those fees every time a credit or a debit card is used, and we know that's a lot. Uh, now, some retailers say that the increased fees will force them to raise prices or stop accepting certain credit cards. Visa and MasterCard claim that the fees help pay for rewards programs and banking services and guarantee payment in cases of overdraft or cases of fraud. Right now at 646, a former Minneapolis police officer is pleading guilty to a charge in the death of George Floyd. Thomas Lane is charged with one count of aiding and abetting second degree manslaughter. He was one of the three police officers, three other police officers on the scene when Derek Chauvin put his knee into Floyd's neck until Floyd died. Now Floyd's cousin says that he's happy with the plea bargain. See the words in writing that yes, I'm guilty of of doing harm. Um, it's validating and the first step um, in healing. Now Lane and two other police officers, Jay Alexander King and two yeah, and two, two, they have already been convicted on federal charges of violating Floyd's civil rights. All three are now facing state charges. For the last 34 years, a Kansas mother has been left with unanswered questions. For a long time after he vanished, he was on your mind all the time. Every day, every hour. Is it still that way? Oh, yeah. Randy Leach was 17 years old when he disappeared in Leavenworth County, Kansas. This was in 1988. He was last seen at a graduation party, but neither he nor the 1985 Dodge 600 sedan he was driving has ever been found. Randy's mother has no false hope her son is alive, but she still needs to know one thing. Because I need to find out what happened, where he is mainly. We just want to find him. And whatever happened to him will be taken care of in later by the good Lord. Three decades after the disappearance of Randy Leach, KMBC 9 investigates the clues that could finally close this unsolved case. This airs tonight on KMBC 9 News at 6. All right, well, local veterans, they got the trip of a lifetime yesterday. They jetted off to Washington, D.C. to see memorials all in their honor, and we were there when they landed right back here at home. 94 veterans and 40 guardians were a part of yesterday's honor flight. They left KCI at 6 yesterday morning. You saw it right here on First News. Well, they arrived back here at home at 8 o'clock last night, and this was the first fully chartered flight in three years. That's, of course, because of the pandemic. So for these veterans, it's something they will always remember. Everybody was, you know, very uh, kind and understanding, and we were welcomed warmly, you know, everywhere we went. And this here was, wow, this was, this was over the top. The crowd tonight was phenomenal. It was fantastic. Couldn't believe it. And it seemed like a never ending. It just kept going and kept going. The Honor Flight Network of Kansas City says this was their biggest flight ever. Starting tonight, you can see the traveling Vietnam Memorial Wall at the National World War One Museum and Memorial. News Chopper 9 was over the memorial yesterday as this replica arrived. There's going to be an opening ceremony tonight at 6 o'clock. The wall will be on display on the southeast lawn of the museum through Memorial Day. It's free to see except from 7 to 11 on Sunday, May 29th. That is the celebration at the station. It is 649. The Kansas City Chiefs start OTAs next week, but one airline's already looking ahead to the season late in the season. Allegiant Air is helping the kingdom get to Las Vegas to see the Chiefs take on the Raiders. And that's in January of 2023. The airline is scheduling nonstop flights between here and there, Vegas, between January the 5th and the 9th. That game is set for January 8th in Sin City. All right, let's talk some baseball. The Kansas City Royals, they were trying to make it two wins in a row yesterday after their doubleheader split on Tuesday. Well hit. 
deep left center field and junior has gone deep. Bobby Wood Jr. hit a solo shot in the bottom of the third to give the Royals a two to one lead. It was a back and forth game until MJ Melendez put the game away with a two run homer. The Royals win it six to two. The Royals and White Sox wrap up their series today. Carlos Hernandez is going to be on the mound for the Royals first pitch set for 110. Graduation season is on. Southeast High School held its graduation ceremony at UMKC's rec center yesterday afternoon. Seniors from East High School graduated there just a couple of hours later. Now tonight's graduations include Paseo Academy and Northeast High School. Other graduations today include Winnetonka in the North Kansas City School District. That's at 630 at the Hy-Vee Arena in Kansas. Piper will have its graduation at Children's Mercy Park. That's at 530 in the Shawnee Mission School District. Shawnee Mission Northwest grads walk at 7 at the Shawnee Mission School District Stadium North location and Horizons High School graduates get to walk at 630 at the district stadium south location. Uh, congratulations graduates and uh, a lot of those events. Most of those events that we just listed are being held outside and at least they have decent weather as long as they don't mind sweating a lot. Yeah, you're going to have <laughs> June July like heat and humidity for this evening's graduation plans. Temperatures in the mid 80s from 6 to 8 o'clock and then still pretty close to 80 degrees at 9 o'clock tonight with a lot of starlight. Thunderstorms moving into southeastern Kansas, southwestern Missouri. Those are moving almost right over uh, I-49 at this time. You see all the lightning concentrated there uh, down near Nevada, moving toward uh, Lake of the Ozarks. Some of the stronger storms might even produce some strong wind gusts and hail. Those should stay just south of Kansas City. But I do have some pause with that line being as far back west as it is that we, we could get clipped with a shower or a thunderstorm uh, in the next few hours here in the metro. We do have a cloudy sky in place from the thunderstorms kind of blowing off those cirrus clouds. 63 degrees and you can feel that humidity and you'll feel it all day long with a mostly cloudy sky this morning. Those storms the most likely to stay south of the metro, but I, I can't entirely rule it out. Uh, that they do, you know, bump into KC 88 degrees at three o'clock this afternoon for a high this weekend. If you have flexible plans, plans that you can easily change from Saturday to Sunday, if they're outdoor plants. I'd go ahead and do that. Rainy and stormy impacts are likely Saturday morning through the evening, not anticipating any severe weather, but look at how cool it's going to get 57 degrees for high on Saturday. Scattered clouds and sunshine on Sunday, 66 degrees. We'll have a look at your first alert nine day forecast. Another stormy period for next week that's coming up.
These streetcar contractors have been hard at work this morning, moving the extension project forward. When First News continues on KCWE, we're going to have a look at the progress they've been making in just a few short hours. Hey, Johnny Rollins, how's it looking? Hey, Jamie, we're looking great right now. An all-star start to the rush hour, northbound I-35, the Overland Parkway, case in point. Look at that, wide open up to 75th Street, all the way into downtown I-35 from the southwest side, looking just like this. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. And Johnny, there are some stronger thunderstorms that are just south of Butler. They're moving north and east toward Clinton, Truman Lake, Lake of the Ozarks. You know, most of the indications point towards this cluster of storms staying just southeast of Kansas City, south of 50 Highway. It's going to be pretty close to the metro in the next few hours. Uh, First Alert Meteorologist Katie Horner is going to have an update on the timing and the track that those storms are going to take through the morning on KCWE. All right. Well, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Jamie. It's been great to have you up it's here at nice. 6. Um, <laughs> look at that. News Chopper 9's Johnny Rollins <laughs> giving us a preview of summer.